Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and this video is an addendum to a tutorial I created to teach how to make art brushes in Adobe Illustrator. In that video, I already had the leaves and the branches created, and I promised to show you how I made those. So that's what this video is for, and if you haven't seen the other one yet, you can go ahead and watch how I create the leaves and the branches, and then go watch that one and find out how to make those into art brushes. So let's move into a new document. The first leaf we'll make is a skinny leaf. I'll get the ellipse tool keyboard shortcut L and click on the artboard to open the ellipse dialog box. I'll type in 1.5 inches for the width, tab down and type in 0.25 for the height, and then I'm going to hit the return key and that gives me my ellipse. Now I want the right side of it to be pointed, so I'll get the anchor point tool keyboard shortcut shift C and we're going to click on the right anchor to point the leaf. Now for the stem, I'll get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut backslash, and click on the artboard to open the line segment tool options dialog box. And I'm going to just type in two inches. The angle is at zero, and I'll say OK. Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll select the leaf and the stem, and we're going to center them. I'll come to the properties panel and click on vertical align center, and then I want them both aligned on the right side, so I'll click this icon, horizontal align right. Now I'll click on the artboard, and you can see that the stem and the leaf are centered, and they're both aligned on the right side. I'll select my leaf now and you can see that it has a white fill and a one point stroke. I always add a white fill to the objects when I'm creating black and white objects for art brushes because when I begin to draw with them I'll overlap the different brushes and I don't want to be able to see through them. All right, let's go ahead and select both of these and I'm going to group them keyboard shortcut command G and then I'll move this up and out of the way and the next leaf we're going to make is a wide leaf. Again, I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and click on the artboard to open up the ellipse dialog box. And I'll type in one for the width, tab down, and type in one for the height, and hit the return key. Now I want to move the right anchor to the right half an inch, so we'll first get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and click on the right anchor. Then I'll come up to Object, Transform, Move, and the design kind of went crazy, but once we have the right values in here, you'll see that it's going to be just perfect. So we want to move that anchor a half an inch to the right, so I'm going to type in 0.5 for horizontal. If I was moving it to the left, I would type in minus 0.5, but we put in a positive value to move it to the right. I'll tab down and I'll type in zero for vertical. We're going to ignore these other two items here and just say OK. So I have my shape for my leaf. I want this one to also be pointed. So I'll get the anchor point tool, keyboard shortcut, shift C, and click here on the right anchor. Now I'll get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut backslash, and click on the artboard. We want another two inch stem, so we're just going to leave two inches typed in here and say OK. Get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, select both of these, come over and center them and align them to the right together. Now for this leaf, I'm going to draw some veins in here with my mouse. And I want to make sure that I start right on the path and end on the path so the leaf looks really neat. So let's zoom in. I'll use the zoom tool, keyboard shortcut Z, and then I'll get the pen tool, keyboard shortcut P. And I'll click here and you can see the word path and that helps me know that I'm right where I want to be. If you're not seeing path, then you probably don't have smart guides turned on. You can come up to view and just down here to smart guides, click this. The keyboard shortcut is command U. 
All right, so I have the pen tool selected. I'll click once here, and then I'm going to move slightly to the right and click on the center path, and I'll hold my mouse down, and I'm going to drag until I have a nice little curve here, and then I'm going to release my mouse and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. And now we're going to repeat that. I'll get the pen tool, keyboard shortcut P, click on the upper path, come down, a little bit to the right, click on the center path, hold the mouse down, drag a curve, and then release the mouse, get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and we'll do this one more time, get the pen tool, keyboard shortcut P, click on the outer path, come to the center path, click down, hold, and drag until I have the curve I want, release the mouse, and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. Now I'm going to select my three veins. I'll click on the first one, then I'll hold down the shift key so that I can select multiples all together, and I'm going to group them, keyboard shortcut, command G, and then we're going to reflect these on the other side. So I'll get the reflect tool, keyboard shortcut O. I'm going to place my cursor on the center path, and before I click on that, I'm going to hold the Option key down. So I'm holding that key down and click, and that opens up the Reflect dialog box. Now I want a horizontal reflection, so I'm going to click Horizontal, and then I want to copy, because I want to keep these veins on the top that I had already. So we'll click copy and now we have two sets of reflecting veins on our leaf. Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'm going to select all of these objects together and group them, keyboard shortcut command G, and then I'm going to recenter the artboard, keyboard shortcut command zero, and we'll move our leaf over here out of the way and we're going to make some stems. I'll get the ellipse tool again, keyboard shortcut L, click on the artboard, and the first one is going to be 6.3 inches. I'll tab down and type in .08, and then hit the return key, and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and we'll move this one up here, get the ellipse tool again, keyboard shortcut L, click on the artboard, and this one's going to be 7.3 by 0 0.03, press return, and I'll get the selection tool again, and we'll move this here. Now let me select this, and look, this needs to have a white fill, and let's double check this one here, and it needs a white fill fill. All right, now then we're going to make one more leaf, and that's going to be a round leaf. So again, we're going to get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and click on the artboard to open the ellipse dialog box. I'll type in 0.5, tab down, and 0.5, and then hit the return key. And we're going to move the left anchor this time. I'll get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and click on that left anchor, and then come up to Object, Transform, and Move. And remember I said if we're going to move to the left, you put in a negative value. We're going to move the left anchor a quarter of an inch to the left. So I'm going to type in minus 0.25, and then I'll tab down, and I don't want a vertical movement, so I'll type in 0, and then I'll say OK, and that gives me the shape of the leaf that I want. Now, I want to add a little center vein here on my leaf, so I'm going to get the pen tool, keyboard shortcut P, and I'll start in the upper third here. I'm just going to click once with my mouse, and then I'm going to come over here to this left anchor, press and hold, and I'm going to just add a little curve here, and then release my mouse and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. Now I'll select my leaf, group it with the stem, keyboard shortcut, command G, and I want to make one copy. So I'll select it, hold down the Option key, and we'll just drag a copy over here. We're going to use this in a minute. Now for this leaf, I'm going to rotate it first, and I know exactly how much I want to rotate it, so I'm going to get the Rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I'm going to click here on this left anchor, but before I do, I'm going to hold down the Option key. So I'm holding that key down, and now I click the anchor 
and it opens the rotate dialog box so I can type in the exact angle which is going to be 60 degrees and then we're going to say OK. Now I have the rotation that I want but I want to also reflect it so that when we add this to a stem I'm going to have matching leaves on both sides of the stem. So we're going to get the reflect tool again and that's keyboard shortcut O and I'll come over here and I'll place my mouse on the anchor, but I'm not pressing down yet. I first am going to hold down the Option key, then I'll press, and that opens the Reflect dialog box. Now, we do want a horizontal reflection, but I also need to be sure and click Copy. So I'll click that, and you'll see that I have these two leaves together, and I'm going to actually group these keyboard shortcut command G and now I'm going to make my stem I'll get the line segment tool keyboard shortcut backslash and click on the artboard to open the line segment tool options dialog box and type in seven inches and then hit the return key I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V let's select both the leaf and the stem we're going to center them and align them to the right. Now if you look closely, you'll see that the stem is in front of the leaves and I actually want it behind there. Let me show you why that is. I'm going to open the layers panel and you can see here is my stem. It was the last thing that was created and the way Illustrator works, each new item that is created goes to the top of the list, which means it's in front of any objects that are behind it. And if you'd like to understand more about the layers panel you can check out the tutorial that I'll leave a link to at the end of this video which tells you how to use the layers panel in Adobe Illustrator but for right now I just want to move my stem behind the leaves and so I have to move it to the bottom of the list so I'll just grab it and drag it down here and now the stem is behind these leaves. Now I'm going to select my leaves and I'm going to make a copy that's an inch and a half to the left. So we're going to come over here again to Object, Transform, Move, and we'll type in minus 1.5, tab down, put zero for vertical, and then I'll press copy. Now while this is still selected, I'll duplicate that move two more times using the keyboard shortcut Command D and Command D. Now all I have to do is come get this extra leaf that we created earlier and place it at the top and group these together, keyboard shortcut command G, and this branch is finished. I'm going to make another branch using our little skinny leaf, but I'm going to turn it into an art brush first. So I'll select the leaf and open the brushes panel. If you don't have the brushes panel already opened up on your artboard, come up to Window and down to Brushes. Click that and you can just dock this tab over here next to the Layers panel. Alright, so let's click on the New Brush icon and I'm going to choose Art Brush and say OK. And I'm going to name this Skinny Leaf. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because that's what the other video was for. And now here's our art brush that we're going to use. So I'm going to get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut backslash, and I'll click on the artboard and this time I'll type in nine inches for the length and hit the return key. And then get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and we're going to move this here. Now I'm going to get the paintbrush tool, keyboard shortcut B, and I have the skinny leaf selected and I'm just going to draw out some leaves. I'm going to try to do this as smooth as I can and I don't want to try to match them because they really wouldn't be matching in real life. So we'll just do it like this and then add one here on the point. And I'm going to zoom in keyboard shortcut Z. And let's get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and get these where they're right there in line. That one looks okay. And then I'll zoom back out, keyboard shortcut command zero. And now I'll group these together, keyboard shortcut command G. 
Now these are the sizes I used when I created the object, but before I turned them into art brushes, I reduced their size because they would be way too big for the wreath that I created. And in trial and error, I discovered that when I reduced the size of these two branches here, I needed to first reduce the weight of the stroke. So I'm going to select this branch here, come over to the properties panel, and I'm going to reduce this to 0.75. I'm going to turn on the grids because this is going to help me measure each one of these squares is three inches. So let's just move this right to the edge and I'll grab hold of the anchor here and I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I keep that same proportion and there we have our three inch branch and i also reduced this leaf here so i'm going to move it right over to the edge and then grab hold of the anchor and i reduced this to an inch and an eighth so i'll hold down the shift key and we'll get that to one and an eighth inches now for this last branch because i used an art brush to create it if I reduce it the way I did this little round leaf brush, it doesn't work out proportionally the way I want it to. Let me show you. I'll select this and we'll just hold down the shift key and we'll move it down here. And those leaves now don't look anything like the original leaf. So let me undo that. Keyboard shortcut, Command Z. So the first thing I'll do is come up to Object, Path, outline stroke and now you don't really notice a difference but I'm going to be able to reduce the size of this and it's going to stay looking much more like the leaf that we started with but I do want to reduce the weight of the stroke so I'm going to select it and come over here and choose 0.75 then I'll hold the shift key down and we're just going to move this here to three inches. Now the last thing that I created was not for an art brush, but it was the rose shape that you see here on the wreath. I created a template for that. So let me get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and I'll click on the artboard. I'm going to type in one and a half inches for the width, tab down, type in one inch for the height, and hit the return key. Let's give this a stroke so we can see it and then come over to the layers panel and I'm going to lock that so it doesn't move around as I begin to draw. I'm going to use the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut N, and I'll start at the center and I'm just going to kind of go in a circle. And this is not supposed to be neat. In fact, it'd be really hard to make it neat as you use a mouse. Just don't overlap your lines if you can help it. I'm going to come around here and this is a template rather than something in stone. So if you get a little lopsided on one side, it's really not going to matter. Just keep going. You can always start over if you're not happy with it. But let's get this right here. And I'm going to end up kind of going into one of these other lines. And then I'll unlock the rectangle, get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, select the rectangle and delete it. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit with the zoom tool, keyboard shortcut Z. I'll get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and I'm going to work this around where it looks a little more even. And then let's come to the properties panel and click on the word stroke. And I'm going to choose round cap. Now I'll recenter the artboard keyboard shortcut command zero and let's select our rows and give it a white fill and this is going to work just fine. Now this is a lot bigger than we need but let me get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V. I'll select the rows and here's what I did. I held down the option key, made some copies and I just kind of change the size and change the angle and that's how I created the leaves and the branches and the rows to make 
our wreath. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go check that out now so that you know how to make the art brushes and how to use them. It's really easy to use different shapes and objects to create leaves and to create floral items. And I think if you just play around with this a little bit, you're going to have a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching how to do this. And I'm anxious to hear from you and to see some of the work that you've done. Now, be sure and subscribe to my channel channel so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.